Welcome to another one of our videos on our 1923 house framing, or should I say on how homes could have been framed in 1923. Now, you need to keep in mind that I'm not about to suggest that all homes built in 1923 were framed this way, but I am suggesting that some of them were. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing on the list is that there are no double top plates. They were usually just nailed together. Everything was just nailed together. And of course the wall framing studs are sitting on top of the sill plate and not on top of the floor sheathing. And they were usually nailed against the floor joist with no blocks. However, there could have been blocks installed, but that probably wouldn't have been uh, the case because they went blocks weren't really popular until they started setting the walls on top of the floor sheathing. Take a look at the three windows here. Double studs or double trimmers here underneath the header. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the header where there's usually going to be some type of a ripped strip of lumber that will fur out the wall to where it's going to be even with the wall framing stud on the inside. And there's usually going to be a 2x6, a 2x8, or even a 2x4 on the outside. Not like construction standard framing today where we would have a 4x6 or a 4x8, for example. Here they just had a 2x6 with a furring strip on the inside. Next up, let's take a look at the inside wall where we have three equally sized windows and the same reveal on each side, two 2 by 4s all the way across. Next up, let's take a look at the channel here where the wall nails into the framing plate and of course the break here where it's just nailed into the wall framing stud and of course the backing. Probably a 1 by maybe a 1 by 4 1 by 6 And of course that will make a little more sense once we look at the inside here, where if we didn't have this piece, that the lathing wouldn't have anything to nail to. Let's take a look at another inside channel. And of course the door headers would be framed the same as the window headers. And the inside channel here though might be framed a little different. We're going to look at two different ways. The first would be that maybe there's just a space a little bit away from the edge here and then the next would be moving the backing back a little bit now sometimes the lathers would have ran the lath through a little bit and then put a backing strip on the other side just used their lath and then nailed this corner to it so i've seen this before where there's no corner backing i just wanted to point that out and throughout the video i'm going to provide you with other methods i have seen in a variety of different situations now let's take a look at something that probably wasn't going to happen and that would be running the top plate through. There's a good chance the wall would have stopped right here, but maybe it didn't. Maybe they ran it through so that they could attach their backing to the top plate and to the wall framing stud and end up with a one inch gap around the fireplace. And of course on the other side, same situation. And again, the pop out. I really don't know why they did this. It seems like they could have just ran this wall through and then brought the fireplace over a little bit. And then of course the bedroom would have been a little larger. The walls would have been easier to frame. And of course the living room would have been what? Six or seven inches smaller. But maybe that, uh, maybe the fireplace encroaching in on the living room was already making it uh, cramping the space. Next up, let's take a look at the front wall with the front door and if you remember this door is a little larger because it's going to have two side lights or two smaller windows in it and of course our windows on each side and the front porch beams of course would just be connecting with no building hardware everything's nailed together backing and of course the porch beams support beams for the roof rafters sitting on top of a post and on top of a two by four. If you remember in the drawing, it had some type of a column that wrapped around it. So I figured I could have the two by four outside of the wall. The other living room windows. And of course, these are framed a little differently. We have one stud going all the way up to the top and then two trimmers on each side. And of course, another way to frame a window. This would probably be another common method of framing 
they would just go 16 inches on center and basically cut the window out. They just basically fill it in, run the header all the way over and the sill all the way over along with a filler stud or a window trimmer that would produce the desired width of the window framing or the rough window opening. And I went ahead and even though the bottom sill runs through, I went ahead and stopped the filler piece here because this is one way they could have built it. However, they could have also continued the filler piece all the way through. Corner window, again two, you're usually going to have a full length stud and a trimmer. However, this window could have been shoved further against the corner, either two inches or all the way to where the wall would have went into the door jamb. So it could have been framed, moved over two inches, or it could have been moved over four inches to where this face of the wall framing stud, face of the door trimmer, would have been even with the wall framing and the lath would have went into it. So again, another suggestion, bathroom window, and of course the backing for the corner here, I've seen this plenty of times where they just gave the lather about a half inch, went ahead and just put a strip on the side, you know, instead of a full length two by four. And of course the other windows, corner window again, inside view of the bedroom windows, Another view, and of course the framing plate here is lapping over the window header and of course could be nailed into it to um, create a stronger connection there. Corner of the window framing, bottom, and of course the window here was framed to where the wall framing stud was kept at 16 inches on center. So 16 inches on center going this way, more than likely they would have just moved it over or installed some type of a block in between the trimmer and the wall framing stud. Of course, the window here, a top plate, the brake is over the header, allowing for a stronger connection. You could nail the each side of the framing plate into the header. And even though this probably wouldn't have happened, I went ahead and threw it in there because I've seen it before, where you might have a 24 or even a 26 inch span between wall framing studs. And of course, a one by four backing for the lath. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the room. Closet door for the bedroom here. Now I got to point this out. This is probably going to be the most common method used for framing a channel. And that would be putting two 2x4s, centering them on the edge. So the center of the 2x4 would be right here and right here. And that'll be a, come a little clearer when we go ahead and take a look at the other side. So if we had a two by four, we would have one inch over here and one inch over here. And they would just simply nail this framing stud into this. They would nail it in and that would create a nice tight connection there. So real common method. Something else you might have seen would have been where they just took blocks. They might have had three or four blocks that were scrap pieces of wood and they just nailed them to create a corner for backing. And again, it might have just been whatever in the heck they had. It was just something to nail the lath to. So the inside of the closet here, the backing, another way of putting the backing in, a full one by six. And you might not have had, keep in mind, if you had one by eight for the flooring, for the floor sheathing, you might not have had one by six, but you would have been able to cut it down. But if you're using a handsaw, you're probably not going to be ripping this board down. You're just going to be nailing a one by eight there. And hopefully that makes sense. And of course, here's the door to the bathroom and then into the hallway. Now let's take a look at the closet. Framing. Now I didn't put any backing here. I've came across jobs before where the lath was just nailed. It kind of cantilevered over or floated over to the edge here. Now this gap is a little too big, but you know, if you had a gap, just a one inch gap here, or maybe even a two inch gap, they would just nail it to the framing here and then just let it hang over. And that would be enough for the plasterer. Front of the closet, backing, backing, door into the bedroom, bedroom wall. One of the few walls in the house that just has regular framing there without an opening in it. The dining room in the window. 
coming into the kitchen. Remember, this is the stairwell up to the attic and, of course, the entry. At least it's listed as an entry. Windows, full length header, another full length header. So a lot of, a lot of uh, windows in this small room. Maybe a pantry closet here. Leaving the house. And of course here we have a low wall with the headroom there. It's going to be a little lower for the stairwell. And of course these are the walls for the stairs. And I have it drawn. They're all cut to fit. And uh, more on that when we actually build the stairs. But here you can see where there is a gap for the 1 by 12 or 1 by 10 stair stringer that we're going to use. And again, more on that when I get to that video. This would be the side door or the back door. And a couple of steps going up to the house or up into the entryway. Dining room, bottom of the window framing. Another view again of the wall framing studs connecting to the floor joist. Back in here, different sizes. The dining room window. And here's something I wanted to show you. It wasn't uncommon if they had a break and they had the wall framing studs, they would just simply put a block underneath it and nail to it. This was another common form of attaching the window framing together. And that brings us to the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, you know what to do. Hit the thumbs up button. Any comments or questions, leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.